Hello, you are watching West Bloomfield 911. I'm Officer Rick, and on behalf of Chief Mike Patton and the men and women of the West Bloomfield Police Department, once again, welcome to our show. Before we get started with a very popular feature called the Corner Spotlight, we're going to introduce our guest, Colonel Mindy Albright, Master Trainer for the International Fellowship of Chaplains. Mindy, how are you? Very good. good. Honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now, don't run away. We're going to do the Corner Spotlight and highlight one of our fellow employees, and we'll come Very right good. back. Folks, you'll notice on your screen the countenance of Officer Brooke Dolmeyer. Police Officer Dolmeyer is currently working the road patrol, and in 2008, she was initially hired as a cadet, and she was promoted to police officer later that same year. So she has been in West Bloomfield for a total of five years. When I uh, spoke with Brooke and asked her some things about her, she said her favorite food is Thai food, and I do enjoy Thai food as well, but Brooke, we're gonna have to go out and see who likes it hotter, because I like it hot as can be. And uh, her favorite movie? She doesn't have a singular movie, but she loves comedies. And in this racket, you need something to lighten it up a bit, and she does like that. Her favorite music? Country Western. And, uh, and I'm gonna have to ask her if she likes the country Western I like, like Johnny Cash and uh, some of the older artists her accomplishments and hobbies. And if you saw Brooke, she's rather petite, but I've got to tell you, she loves to play hockey and she is one tough lady. Her team, in fact, has won several national championships and she's very proud of that. And I know she's been to Europe and other places playing professional hockey. And um, she said she thoroughly enjoys it. So I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna go on the ice with her because she's gonna make me look very foolish. One of the things about Brooke is uh, she is also married to one of our other officers, Officer Dave Dolmeyer, and they are the proud parents of a, a new baby, so congratulations, Mom and Dad. And when I asked her for her favorite co quote, she said, uh, don't cut corners. And I don't know if she learned that playing hockey or what, but uh, I wasn't gonna argue with her. She had a hockey stick in her hand at the time. So Brooke, thanks for doing the things that you do. Thanks for being here. And I hope you have a long and illustrious career here in West Bloomfield. Okay, we're gonna turn the corner spotlight off and we're gonna talk about a dumb criminal. Now, you're not gonna believe this, but I can't make this up, folks, I really can't. This is about cops and donuts and boy, talk about a cliche. It sounds like a scene from a situation comedy. But in Florida, a man is facing charges that he impersonated a police officer to get discount donuts. You heard me right, you don't have to replay the, the uh, video to see if I said that correctly. The Pasco County Sheriff's deputies say that 48-year-old Charles T., known as Chuck Berry, tried twice recently at a Tampa area Dunkin' Donuts to get discount donuts by impersonating a police officer. And uh, when he returned the next day, the manager wrote down his license plate number, so now he didn't just do it once, he did it twice. Deputies set up a surveillance. I can't believe I'm saying this. They set up a surveillance to get a donut thief and they busted Barry when he returned. And when they did bust him, they found that he had a badge and a 38 caliber revolver in his pocket. So he meant business. And um, Chuck, forget the donuts, go back to playing guitar and try to make it ring like a bell. All right, folks, we'll be right back with our very special guest, Mindy Albright, don't go away. I just flew in from Tampa. I was in Pasco County. Did you? <laughs> You're watching West Bloomfield 911 on Civic Center TV, a service of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission. For more information or to watch episodes on demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash WB911. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. The West Bloomfield Police Foundation raises money to help those who protect and serve the community. Whether it's emotional or financial support, the foundation provides a helping hand to officers, their families, and those in the community. For more information on the West Bloomfield Police Foundation, contact Kurt Lawson at 248-975-8900 or visit wbpolicefoundation.org. And we are back once again with Master Trainer, Colonel Mindy Albright of the International Fellowship of Chaplains. Mindy, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Now, 
Tell the folks what you told me after we did that dumb criminal, which is coincidental, but I thought it was hilarious. This is great. I just flew in last night from Pasco County. <laughs> <laughs> did you stop at that Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no, but they did bring Dunkin' Donuts to us to the class, so maybe. Re yeah. I, I wonder if But not. we probably did get the discount correctly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you can't make that stuff up. No, not know? at all. Not at all. Well, you know, I, I do have a quick question for you. Sure. We met um, when I took uh, SISM training out in Macomb County. And, of course, that's so far from West Bloomfield, I thought I needed a visa to get out there. But <laughs> um, your title is Colonel. Yes. Now, how does the International Fellowship of Chaplains determine titles? Is that based on, uh, I know, like the uh, Salvation Army, their ministers you use military designations also. Yeah. Is that based on that? Um, ours is based on uh, position and the responsibilities in which we do earn mm -hmm. um, through time. Uh, I have been with International Fellowship of Chaplains for about just over eight years, and uh, I am ordained with them. Um, but our people are, and as chaplains, and a lot of people don't understand exactly what chaplains are, and they, they know they're people doing something good, right. okay? Uh, but we don't have churches, right. so we don't have a fellowship. And kind of how I base it is, is that a pastor is in charge of a flock of what? Maybe sheep, okay? Um, we work with goats. <laughs> so we're working with people on the outside of the church and in everyday life. Therefore, we specifically train our people too, to um, be able to be relevant in what is happening out in the world. Right. So when we talk about position of, of people, and not everyone has rank, but those that are uh, in leadership, uh, I am on the board, um, I am also the director of education and training for the organization. Mm -hmm. So because of all of my responsibilities, that's how I, through the years, have earned and acquired rank. Well, go through the rank structure for me a little bit, if you would. Uh, but, uh, I guess we'll start from the bottom up. How okay, basically, um, and, and what we, where the, the rank structure comes in is there's a, a core uh, in, and there are cores in cities across uh, the country. One of our largest cores, in fact, is in uh, Albuquerque. Okay. And uh, they have about 150 uh, chaplains. Some of them are community chaplains that they are beginning and they're working under uh, the command structure. Okay, within that command structure, then there would be rank okay. uh, because of the responsibilities mm -hmm. there again. And so they would be, there would be um, captains, uh, some lieutenants, captains, uh, then majors, uh, lieutenant, light colonels, and full birds. Like okay. Me. Now, the uh, IFOC is not the only chaplaincy program out there. there no. There's quite a few, actually. Correct. Isn't that? Correct. Um, unfortunately, there are some on the website, and I would would really warn people against. Uh, for thirty nine ninety five, you too can have a certificate and a oh, badge, yes, yeah. which is w across the board with anything, and that's that's not good. Uh, but our program uh, is a little bit different. Um, we're over 20 years old, and we've come through basically to the from the point where there really weren't chaplaincy programs, uh, except for in connection with um, those that had um, the Masters of Divinity through seminaries, um, even though they may not have had a chaplaincy program, and there aren't many. Now there are some that are mm -hmm. coming along the line uh, within the seminaries, um, but it's still predominantly denominational and church-based, uh, where we are not connected specifically to a denomination, which um, gives us actually a broader stance um, within approval from the government because we do serve governmental agencies mm -hmm. and we're there for everyone. Right. And our people actually are fine-tuned trained in specific areas. For example, um, we had 26 in the hot zone at 9-11. Mm -hmm. Our people are equipped to be able to cross the tape so that with law enforcement particularly, uh, or any of the first responders, they don't feel like they have to babysit our people. Right. And that's important. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, and, and as I was going through your, um, your biography, I noticed that you had also gone down to uh, Louisiana right after Katrina. Now, did you go for the IFOC? Uh, actually, I was in um, 
uh, d down in that area in Kiln, Mississippi, actually, yeah. where the eye oh, okay. of the storm actually hit. Okay. Um, I was I was on, in uh, New Orleans area. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, most of the damage, and you know, there, most of the damage there was from the levees mm -hmm. breaking. Right. And yes, that was storm induced. But in Kiln, Mississippi, that's where the eye of the storm yeah, we, hit. Yeah, we went to Mississippi. Me yes. And, uh, the other guy I was with, and then we ended up. Right. Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, the eye of Katrina was bigger than all of Ike. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, was, it was. People can't imagine that. No. I know when I went down there and just saw the expanse of the devastation, it, yep. it was beyond description. It's just phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, they're still recovering. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, one of the things people were so frustrated with, well, why did it take so long? You know, and well, you know, when you were going into that area, and you're looking at the GERD rails on the sides of the expressway, and they had these dimples and dimple and dimple. There were over 100 miles of trees yeah. that had to be cleared oh, before yeah. they can get in. Yeah. So it takes time. Right. <laughs> and I mean, they all looked like toothpicks. They were just laying on exactly. the yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it, the thing I found interesting, and we'll off the beaten path a little bit, I don't know if you found it as well, talking to the folks down in uh, Louisiana, they all expected something like this at some point. Oh, sure. And yet, you know, this this is home. It right. It doesn't matter, this is home. You so know, that and, was interesting. And we think, you know, after something like that, they go, why are you rebuilding? Yeah. Why are you going why back? Why are you here? Because you know it's coming back, <laughs> right, you know? Right, right. And that's, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I was in Galveston. But it's home, Galveston. that's where they're going to stay. Right, I was in Galveston. I was in a number of areas after a number of events. And, you know, you, you go back in, and uh, one of the, um, Sabine Pass area, they had just finished rebuilding the fire house mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And it, then they got hit again. Yeah. And it was like, come on, guys, just move. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, they're, you know, it's I guess home. it's home it and is. they're not going it's to. Home. Absolutely. Exactly. And they have a loyalty to the area. Exactly. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, when we first met, actually, during SISM training and then. Uh, then I also took the uh, chaplaincy program, mm -hmm. uh, even though I'm already or, ordained through the Catholic Church as a mm -hmm. deacon, but it was a very beneficial program, sure. and uh, I saw you both, and I didn't know who was following who, so uh, yeah. talk a little bit about SISM, because I found okay. that pretty interesting, um, and, and explain what that is to yes, the folks out yes. there. Critical Incident Stress Management is a, is a program um, with the um, International Fellowship or International Critical Incident Stress Foundation out of Maryland. And that is a program actually has been in existence for over 20 years. Um, it was developed by uh, Dr. Jeff Mitchell, um, but it was he started researching it out of practicality because he was a firefighter. Mm -hmm. So as a first responder, and that's what's beautiful about this, and you, I'm sure that you really appreciated that because the practicality of it and why it works mm -hmm. with crisis intervention where we go in and work after events with individuals that have experienced trauma, they've experienced um, a variety of events, and it could be anything. We look a little bit at the event, but what we have to do is we look at the response that that individual mm -hmm. is having. It's not psychotherapy. It's not meant to be psychotherapy right. or replace it's it. It's almost like a, it's just a bridge to help them if they need that. Exactly, to because to that not point. everybody's broken, right? you know, after an right. event. But can we be wounded? Absolutely. But it helps to mitigate PTSD, post-traumatic sure. stress disorder sure. as well. Right. Now, um, there, there is also, I took the... Uh, the initial program, and there were two parts to it, so why don't you explain that? Okay, um, this is what we call the GRIN class, G-R-I-N, and it's because, uh, it, and it is a dual certification. So in those three days that we train people, and it's very intensive, there's the group crisis intervention where you learn the, the group process and then there's the individual and peer support mm -hmm. so that you can be doing and working one on ones. Right. And there are two there are different techniques now is, working at. Is that open to anybody? That is open to anyone. So and one doesn't have to be uh, like myself, a police officer to take that? No, no. We One doesn't have to be uh, ordained in a church to take that. Oh, no, okay. no. But all of those we would encourage to come. Um, school teachers 
um, administration for for schools, corporations, mm -hmm. all of this. Uh, I, I just came back uh, from Florida where I was doing a class there and we had folks in that class, everyone from uh, flight attendants from Air Canada, I had, mm -hmm. had a gal there from Manitoba area, um, uh, police officers, fire, uh, school counselors, uh, pastors, chaplains, uh, people from every venue, corporate individuals, people from, from all areas, because where is there not a person who they could come in contact right. with? And it doesn't have to be a large event in crisis. Right. It could right. be an event of something just of what would seem a small magnitude, but it's having a profound effect right. on that individual. Well, I know in the class that I took, uh, of course, there was uh, several of us who were in law enforcement. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, there were a group of us, including myself, who uh, were crisis negotiators exactly. or hostage negotiators or whatever phrase you want to use for that. Um, there were some psychologists, mm -hmm. um, couple, some teachers, some ministers, so there was a nice, mm -hmm. nice mix of people. Yeah. And in fact, we had um, on one of the other shows recently, uh, you probably remember Pastor Tim Holzerlin, mm -hmm. and I know he just took the SISM class yes. with you. So, uh, yes. so it had a nice cross reference mm -hmm. of people there. Exactly. Okay, now there's the basic class, and in that particular class that I went to, there was two parts to it, but there's also an advanced. Why don't you go into that a little yes. bit? Yes. Uh, there's there's both advanced uh, group and there's advanced in individual, mm -hmm. but uh, ICISF does have, they have a whole array of classes, but those two classes that, that you took is the basic foundation and understanding of the, the model mm -hmm. of SISM, uh, critical incident stress management, and then going into the other classes, then you learn to apply different techniques. They have everything from classes in terrorism and then the the advanced of of those two classes. But uh, terrorism, they have working with kids in school, they have um, uh, line of duty death, they mm -hmm. have all a, a huge array of, right. of classes that are available. Absolutely. Now, let's get out of that for a little bit because it's also interesting to me that you are a, an author. Yes. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yes. In fact, you wrote the Adventures of Grandma Chap series yes. of books, children's yes. books. Yes, yes. Uh, there are two out right now. The third is coming uh, actually next week, and that is going to be a Christmas book that's coming, um, The Christmas Goat. And um, they are all true stories. Um, I have an array of um, little people. Um, I'm, I'm Scotch-Irish, and they are the wee barons <laughs> of our family, and um, <coughs> they give me my plenty of is, material. My wife is Scotch-Irish, too, but in awesome. spite of that, I still love her. Very good, <laughs> yes. So, they give me lots of material to I write bet. about, I yes. Uh, the first book, uh, Grandma Chap and the Littlest Chaplain, um, is actually the only exclusive book for children about chaplaincy okay. and what true chaplaincy is. And um, there's moral story based in, and they are true stories mm -hmm. of, of the kids. The, um, <clears throat> the second book is a fundraiser, actually, for Feed My Starving Children program, and uh, that's called Time to Eat. And so that was about how my one grandson really discovered um, that a six-year-old can have a, a very um, prominent effect on world hunger. Yeah. Well, now, why don't you talk about that uh, Feed My Children program? What is that? Feed My Starving Children is um, a, an absolutely fabulous organization, 93 cents on the dollar goes into food. That's a heck of a return. It is amazing. And how they do that, and, and that's what the story, the, the book is about, actually, mm -hmm. uh, is that they come in if you have a group of folks that will participate, and they have, a, they have specific requirements uh, to be able to do it, of course, but they will bring in pallets of all of the different grains of food and how they do a mix. Mm -hmm. And they involve the people and the children mm -hmm in actually packing the food. Wow. And um, we had... This is a worldwide organization? They, they provide distribute, they provide worldwide. In okay. fact, um, in three days, uh, I was involved, and that's, my kids were involved with the program, and in three days of packing, we packed over a million meals wow. in three days. That's a lot of food. Yeah, it is. Half of that went to Haiti, and ha last, this was last year, half of it went to Haiti and half of it went to Somalia. 
Wow. And, and you know, it's funny because, well, not funny, but ironic, because we have some friends that just, uh, actually two groups of friends that just came back from Haiti, and they have not recovered either. You know, we need to talk to them thing. because it is. Um, yeah. We and and that's one of the sad notes is that there are groups that will, with good intent, will mm -hmm. send folks into areas like that, and they don't totally prepare them. Right. And you can't be prepared for everything. Sure. But um, and that's where the debriefings really, with the crisis sure. intervention, really work well right. with with those kinds of of situations too. Well, now, I, you know, you've got a whole list of things you're involved with, and you're a uh, law enforcement chaplain with the Madison Heights Police Department. Department. You uh, have worked with the Oakland County Sheriff's Office as a chaplain. Mm -hmm. One that, that I saw in here and I wasn't familiar with, the NAS, NASDN, what is that? Um, that is um, out of working with uh, doing search and rescue with canine. Okay. And uh, that's that's search and rescue, um, and that was that was sort of in another life. Um, you know, I uh, uh, kind of lived a, a life of of a cat. You know, um, had nine lives. But um, I've been in emergency services for over thirty years, and worked with Oakland County in connection with doing um, search and rescue. I had dogs. I don't. I I have a dog right now, but she's not um, certified for for search and rescue work. She's just um, but. She's yeah, she's a ro uh, just a, a road bump. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thirty years. How did you get started with us? What what motivated you to get it started with this? Well, um, actually, in connection with um, uh, auxiliary of the Air Force, uh, with Civil Air Patrol, and um, was pulled actually in with um, very close doing. I wasn't active duty, but I was on bases all the time, and I did logistics um, on a state base. Uh, Michigan Wing and also then uh, did DEA um, searches and um, did the, the dogs, working wow. with the dogs and so um, had a lot of Air Force training uh, in connection with. So you've been, you've been uh You've covered the gamut of helping in a variety of uh, capacities. Well, that's been the fun thing, um, is being able to acquire training in, in all aspects. Even one of the uh, more recent one is um, Homeland Security um, has sent me to New Mexico, to Socorro, um, to New Mexico Tech, where uh, I have received uh, terrorist bombing trainings and suicide bombing trainings. And, you know, there. Uh, Rick, to be honest with you, I, I have a lot of certifications. I've had a lot of the privilege of being trained in many areas. I just pray I never have to use half of them. Right, right. You know, but it, when it happens, it's too late to train. See, now most people would say you are certified, but I'm certifiable. But that's, yeah. that's a different story. <laughs> now we only have about a minute left. <clears throat> okay. So you, uh, if you would wa like to, why don't you give a uh, phone number or a website if people would like Absolutely. to find out about SISM and the IFOC, Okay. as well as you have your own uh, website here. All right. Uh, International Fellowship of Chaplains would be ifoc.org, and I would encourage them to go to the website and check out everything on there, all of the information for contact information would be there. They can send an email or they can make a call from there. Um, for the SISM classes, uh, and there's training schedules there for mm -hmm. all the, the okay. different, and also the SISM now trainings are posted. Okay. But the SISM trainings as well, they can go to mindyalbright.net and that will give them the SISM if they're interested in the books. It's mindyalbright.com. Beautiful. Many don't go away because uh, we have, uh, unfortunately, you know very well from all your service in the community, unfortunately, police officers get hurt in the line mm -hmm. of duty and, and often get killed. So yeah. we would like to remember one of our fallen brothers. Folks, if you would, please remember in your thoughts and in your prayers, police officer Daryl Anthony Hall of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department in the great state of Missouri. Um, he was killed in the line of duty April 24th, 2011. Now you may wonder why are we remembering someone from outside of Michigan? Well certainly he is a hero, but he is a son of Michigan. Police officer Hall was a, a Michigan native who uh, found work and found his destiny in Missouri. And while he was working there as a police officer, he was shot and killed when he confronted two gunmen outside a nightclub on South Fort Street at 2.45 a.m. 
Officer Hall was at the nightclub. He heard gunshots outside. He went outside to investigate. He encountered at least one of the gunmen. Shots were exchanged between Officer Hall and the gunman, and uh, the officer was struck three times. He was transported to the hospital where he succumbed to his wounds a short time later. One of the gunmen was also killed in the incident, but that's not a fair trade-off. And the second gunman at the time of this printing remained at large. Officer Hall had served with St. Louis PD for five years, and he was assigned to the Housing Authority Unit. So if you would, this young man, only 34 years old, killed in the line of duty, please remember him, he's a great American hero. Police Officer Daryl Anthony Hall of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, remember him in your thoughts and your prayers. And on behalf of the men and women of the West Bloomfield Police Department, we would like to thank Mindy Albright for coming on, thank Master you. Trainer, Matter. International Fellowship of Chaplains. Thank you, Mindy. It's thank always you. a pleasure to talk with you. And then, folks, please remember to watch us on the telly at uh, Civic Center TV. And if you can't, you can always find us on civiccentertv.com. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. Remember, tomorrow is promised to no one. I'm Officer Rick, and we'll see you again on West Bloomfield 911.